his career in Canadian forces. Uh, he came to work with us, and we've had the opportunity to have him on staff for almost six years, I understand. And uh, I visit with a mutual friend of his from time to time, and I know that since he's been in the employ of the town, uh, he has uh, brought a lot of experience and a lot of good ideas to help the Public Works Department. So uh, I'm going to sort of come around your way and we'll maybe bump out or whatever. Very <laughs> there. Good morning. <it> <laughs> well, I know you put up with a lot while you've been back here. And I hope it hasn't been too frustrating for you, but we've had a lot of fun and I've heard some conversations and they come up on the staff and how much. I know we're going to miss him, but we wish him well as he tries to do it And uh, we made a great time with hockey. We spent some time with President Meyer Hockey. And we've done some other things. We never get enough of the fight. On uh, behalf of the town of Woodstock, thank you for everything. You God bless and take care. <laughs> Continuing opening remarks, uh, just a couple of quick things. Uh, we will be reading a letter into the record next week from uh, the Salvation Army. They'll be doing their red kettle campaign again. Uh, there's a few changes, but once again, they're looking for any town of Woodstock volunteers that would like to sign up and schedule some time on the kettle. So you will, we've been invited, and if you'd like to do that, uh, there's a, a form at the office where you can call the uh, call the uh, Salvation Army at the church and uh, sign up there. The second thing I'd like to uh, again acknowledge the work of the Rotary and the Air Motor Center staff. We're doing the Tunnel of Zoom for Halloween. I was told there was approximately 1,800 going through the tunnel. And it was a very, very successful event, and it was nice to have had that. I did hear that uh, there was another event that was organized for the members of the Multicultural Association of Carleton County, and they had a nice event for their group. They had a scavenger hunt. So, And at the public, uh, I guess you call it the Protective Services meeting with uh, Chair Leonard, the chief reported that there was very little activity on the streets of Woodstock on Halloween and there were no issues or anything of concern. So we were very, very pleased to report that Halloween was a tremendous success. Did you hear the, the one that the, the event that the NBCC students did? We understand that that did not happen. Oh, it didn't happen? It did not happen. Okay, so with those as uh, opening remarks, I take a motion for the approval of the agenda. Oh. And seconded. On the question, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Uh, business arising from the minutes. It was distributed uh, any number of uh, uh, council have something on the minutes that they wanted to do with or deal with. No. All right, then I'll take a motion for the acceptance of the minutes as distributed. So moved. Seconded. All the question, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, carried. CAO, did you have anything from that set of minutes? Only one item, uh, Mr. Mayor, we're going to go committee later from the minutes. The rest is. Okay, we minutes. do. We didn't have an agenda distributed, but there's one item. We'll have a separate, separate committee meeting for one item, and it will be short. Okay, um, 
Next up for uh, the CAO update. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, for the council, uh, the Christmas craft fair for uh, starters this past uh, Saturday, and I'm going to read it as I received it uh, from our director of uh, recreation and also uh, our tourism coordinator. Uh, close to a thousand attended the crafts for Christmas trade show. I left the Air Motor Center on Saturday, November 7th. The patrons and vendors both shared positive feedback regarding the layout and safety measures put in place. The vendors were very appreciative that we continued with the event. And a peace officer did drop by the event and was very pleased with the layout and safety protocols put in place. I didn't personally attend myself, but I'm sure there's some members of council probably did drop by. So that's the information I received uh, this morning. Also, uh, uh, we are having a meeting this Wednesday, uh, next Wednesday, I'm sorry, and we had a meeting this uh, last week with uh, members of the Reduction K River Association, and it's in reference to things that we're looking at doing at the time with the Fleming Estate and the Tappanandi uh, uh, property. So we're meeting again, not this week, but next week. Uh, also, uh, the Blink Box, which is located uh, down on Main Street, uh, near the church. Uh, within the next uh, next couple of months, it's going to be relocated to the bottom of the hill. Uh, we we'll call it Connell Drive, just out from the high school. I don't know if I call it Connell Road or Connell oh, Park, but it's Connell Park Street. Connell Park Street. So it's going to be relocated, and we are currently working myself, the director of recreation, uh, with the owner that side, uh, Mr. West Corey, to uh, see where from here. And the last item I have is the last two. Uh, Wish my colleague uh, Anne Marie uh, a happy birthday today. So, uh, you know, uh, sometimes you got to recognize good things as well. And uh, Anne Marie, happy birthday. Thank you. Would you like us to sing? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, we'll move on to correspondence. We have uh, one letter this evening from uh, Jordan Hendricks about the Rainbow Prize. And, uh, Request for a change. We'll, after we read the letter, and we'll uh, refer to the CAO to move on to uh, Director of Tourism because she's actually the person who looks after the ordering and the design of the different flags and pennants that we fly from the lamp post downtown. The letter, please. Uh, to Mayor and Council, as a prior resident myself, I believe these flags should, in fact, be taken down and instead replaced with the updated progress flag to be more inclusive. The updated progress flag now includes a triangular base on the flag that includes a black and brown stripe as well as the trans flag. This addition to the flag represents the trans community and the BIPOC LGBTQ plus individuals. To start, BIPOC individuals hold multiple marginalized identities and therefore experience discrimination at an extremely enhanced rate. In 2019, 91% of transgender or gender non-conforming people killed were black women and 81% of these people were under the age of 30. Trans women of color experience discrimination at a higher rate than their white counterparts. However, the trans community in general experiences a higher rate of domestic and sexual violence as well as being the victims of transphobic hate crimes and state violence. In the 2015 transgender U.S. survey, 46% of respondents were verbally harassed within that past year. 9% were physically attacked and 10% were sexually assaulted in said past year. 13% for black individuals. 72% who have done sex work, 65% who experienced homelessness, and 61% who were disabled were all sexually assaulted within that past year, and 54% of these respondents experienced some type of intimate partner violence. But there is more to these marginalized communities than just these specific groups. One in five youth in the justice system identify as LGBTQ+, and 85% of these youth are person of color. LGBTQ plus adults of color experience higher rates of unemployment in the U.S. with 15% being black LGBTQ plus adults, 14% being Latinx LGBTQ plus adults, 
and 11% being API votes, uh, in which this is all in comparison to an 8% national unemployment rate in the US. Gay and bisexual men of color made up a majority new HIV AIDS infections in 2014, in which 39% were black males and 24% were Latino. I understand that these statistics are from the United States. However, we must not show that LGBTQ plus youth who are trans and BIPOC or both in Canada and in this community that they do not matter when they most certainly do. I am proud that the city council is in favor of showing inclusivity. And I am proud to say that I once lived in Woodstock because of your stances. I believe this simple change will be more inclusive than the current flag already being flown. And will also show bigots like Mr. Gordon in this case, that their mindset is no longer welcome in our communities. This change may also encourage us as Canadians to look more into how we treat marginalized communities, such as our own indigenous, black, brown, and mul multitude of other communities, and become more accepting of them within our province and our country. I wish to thank you for your time, and I do hope you consider this minor change. If you wish to learn more, there are several studies conducted among these LGBTQ plus communities, and I encourage you to look at them. A few resources include hrc.org, lgbtfundraisers.org, uh, bonnet.org, and a multitude of others. Sincerely, Jordan Hendricks. Take a motion to direct the CAO to have staff uh, make the change in the banners. Well, let's do some research just, too. Yeah, just on that though, Arthur, I, I would I would say um, I would not just change the banners, but I, I would say we should be reaching out to our community. Uh, for instance, there is a group at the high school that um, are supportive of, of the LB, LGBTQ uh, uh, groups. So I think it, it would be incumbent upon us to just not make a change, but to reach out to those groups and, and get their opinions on this. Okay, take a motion to refer. So moved. Seconded. On the question, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, carried. Uh, next up is the um, consideration of third reading for the bylaw number 4 B, taxi owners and operators. Uh, third reading by title. Uh -huh. Uh, bylaw number 4 B. Uh, bylaw to regulate taxi owners and operators of the town of Woodstock. So moved. Second reading. Moved and seconded by Councillor Leonard, who's on the Connected Services Committee. On that one, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Carried. Okay. Next up, we're going to move into committee reports. We have uh, four this evening. First one up is uh, protective services, and uh, after we get through the report, there's uh, some things that have to be dealt with. Uh, so, uh, CAO, if you would, the protective services report. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Council, I understand on the second page under new business, uh, uh, WPF Body Warren Cameras demonstration. Uh, at the meeting, the, in attendance was Chair Randy Leonard, Mayor Art Smith, Deputy Mayor Amy Anderson. CAO Ken Anthony, Councillor Jeff Bradbury, and Chief of Police Mr. Gary Forward. Chief Forward played a brief video audio visual showing footage of WPF officer who deployed with the body worn camera at a recent non criminal call for service. The video demonstrated both the clarity of the video and audio. It also demonstrated subtle details that the camera picks up that the officer might not, specifically addresses, license plates, Potential witnesses and recorded as part of the officer's attendance, invited presence. Protective Services Committee commented jointly on the value of the body worn cameras will provide in a variety of areas that include increased transparency toward public trust and accountability. He forward advised that the training and deployment is going well and should be completed ahead of schedule. 
projected date for completion was 20th November 2020, and now be as early as the 13th of November. Chief Forward advised that the WPF will notify the public via social media and other as to the when full deployment of body worn cameras with its members has occurred. Uh, Deputy Mayor Anderson inquired about the body worn camera policy and its release to the public now that council has weighed in and, in effect, now made public. Chief Forward agreed that although not common practice to release policing policies, that this policy will be made available to the public for their information to further establish transparency and trust between the community and its police service. Third quarter strategic plan results, Chief Forward provided a visual dashboard to the 2020 Woodstock Police Force strategic plan results to the third quarter. The information confirms that the WPF remains on pace with 75% of objectives completed thus far in 2020, with categories that include education, enforcement, intelligence, wellness, administration, efficiencies, training, and equipment. Letter of agreement between the Woodstock Police Force Community uh, Resource Officer and NB Education Fund. Having received approval to pursue G Forward after the draft letter of agreement for Daniel Cohen District West consideration. The LOA stipulates that ADW shall pay the sum of 10000 per annum to the Woodstock Police Force in support of part time attendance at local schools for our community resource officer. Earlier this week, the ADW approved the LOA building of a bond existing partnership with the Woodstock Police Force. Arthur Slip offered that the Letter of agreement is further evidence of the valued partnership between the town and the school district and recommended that the letter of agreement be sent to council for approval, which was done. Council will review in support of approval at the 9th of November 2020 council. And of course, uh, is attached to the appendix A in this uh, fourth file. Woodstock Police Force Ventilation and Windows Building Renovations. Uh, T4 advised by Director of Administrative Service that NCBB Capital Boring for WPF Ventilation and Windows was approved and asked that a recommendation was required for council. That recommendation will be done tonight through uh, finance. T4 explained that although the ventilation vendor and quote was accurate that the vendor for the windows advised that they will be unable to start their renovations until April 25. Is this renovation has been. Oh, oh, sorry, 2021? Yeah. This April's gone, isn't it? Is this, this renovation has been cited as a safety and security issue, the need to proceed sooner rather than later if necessary. Two additional vendors have been contacted with only one of those submitting a quote, been contacted by G Forward, the 5th of November 2020. The vendor submitting the quote advised that the work should be completed by early January 2021. In addition, this quote meets and exceeds associated building safety and security needs. Accordingly, these changes are placed in the recommendation for council consideration. Public safety building feasibility study. Councillor uh, Bradbury considered how we might proactively look at a future public safety building. Funding is the bar has outgrown its current environment. Discussion on all to how a feasibility study may provide insight and direction into a new building. However, there remains a great deal of information that we do not know. Specifically, how might the policing review and regional policing impact Woodside? Councilor Leonard voiced caution about what a study like that might cost. It was agreed more information required before further discussion on a new building can reasonably take place. A. Anthony agreed to reach out to stakeholders to build additional understanding related to this matter. Dr. Pitt. Dr. Pet program and supporting documentation has been finalized. The committee agreed council has seen the document sufficient time to respond back to questions. In the absence of any further inquiry, it is the recommendation of PSC that Dr. Pet receive approval and sign. Uh, round table conclusion, most we are entered to adjourn, second by A. Anderson meeting adjourned. At 12, it started at 1210 and included at I'm going to say one third. That's it for that, Mr. Mayor. Okay, just in terms of the procedure here, uh, 
Under the Protective Services Committee report, we have a couple of actionable items. Uh, first one is the agreement with uh, School District and the Phone West for the financial support for the community resource officer. Uh, I'm looking for a motion to approve the signing of the memorandum with the school district. Move. All seconded. Seconded. I got my boy down on the end there. Uh, moved and seconded on the question. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, carried. So that memorandum will be signed. Uh, with the school board representatives as quickly as we can get it done. And we're very, very pleased to have that ongoing financial support for that uh, position. Uh, going to need a little bit of uh, clarification on the uh, CAO. When you made your reference uh, to the Finance Committee, I just want to take a look at this one. And with the uh, help of our Director of Administrative Services, and we won't get it right. We have item number two, the approval of the windows at the police station. This is an update. Okay. So, I guess what I really need some help on. We have, uh, are you handling the uh, sort of uh, report from the police department? I have a recommendation for which you have going to, uh, to accept. Two separate things. It's all enough. Uh, the, the, the windows, uh, Mr. Mayor, the one that we discussed about was uh, the windows was uh, because they had to change it from the initial vendor. Yes. So the motion would read for the a building for the windows for the police department would be awarded to Admiral last limited in the amount of 13740 plus HST. So is that what was presented to the finance committee? No, it was not. Uh, no, there's a change. What right? happened when we went to the finance committee? It's at the price that they had from the vendor. Mm -hmm. By the time we got to the technical service meeting, the vendor couldn't supply the service for employment. I guess employment needs really. And it wouldn't happen until probably April or May was the discussion at the meeting. Right. So So, so we went back to Admiral Glass. For, for their pricing, and that's the pricing that he put forward. So I guess before I would, I just where does it fit in with what we had? Budget, right? And approved in finance. It's inconsistent. So what we're going to have to do if we pass it here, we won't accept the recommendation that's in the finance committee report. We can do it that way, and then I guess the other thing that I was thinking of was that. Uh, the director of the administrative services over here has the resolutions for the right amount because the money has been approved uh, on the borrowing that we received, so we're paying it out of the borrowing. Is that so? I guess. Uh, do you have the actual motion to uh, to read for the uh, awarding of the uh, work on the windows? Just hang on for a minute. Do you have a motion ready? Okay. Just I guess on a point of order. Can you or the director of administrative services just refresh what the numbers were in the request for the capital board report? Do I don't have that in front of me. I'm, I, I'm sorry. I I don't have I don't have access to my F drive from yeah. here in this building. You sent us an email. Yeah. Did you know? Yeah. So, but I I didn't quote what that was. Okay, we, we, we we initially put in with was two hundred thousand. Then we had a, a contingency of uh, forty. Two forty. We made a two hundred forty thousand dollars. Okay. And uh, 200,000 and change was for, uh, well, 204,000 was for the public works related piece of equipment. And 36,000 was for the actual uh, repairs to the uh, Woodstock Police Department. Okay. That, that was for, the, that you're right. Yeah. Is, that's that's exactly so what it is. The yeah. ventilation piece, the quote, stands at $20,400. Ventilation piece is it? Yes. Yes. Okay. So the total of that H2 here of 33 is 34,140 dollars plus HST mm -hmm. is is within the 36 thousand dollars that we had set aside that we put approved for the multi capital okay. okay. So we're still within that range that we yeah, requested. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank now, you. Yes. Yeah. Just to clarify, in the finance report, the we have a recommendation for the loader and for the HST. Yes. yes. 
And that will deal with those when we get to the finance committee report. Yeah. I guess what all I was concerned about was that what, what the finance committee uh, did last was we were, we were, uh, we approved 80, 80, well, roughly $8,600. Yeah. So yeah, it was yeah, about 89, this is substantial more. Right. I just don't okay. want to see us go back to topic. If you would uh, read the motion, please, and I'll call for uh, Councilor Leonard and perhaps move it since it is in his committee's report, and then we'll go for a second. Uh, to approve the purchase of the windows uh, for the stop police station from Admiral Glass in the amount of $13,740 plus HSP. So moved by Council Leonard, seconded over here by <coughs> On the question, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed, carried. Now, those are the only uh, two action items and recommendations for protective services for tonight. Now, we will take a motion for the exception of acceptance, rather, of the report with the two corrections that were noted during the reading. Um, Okay, so moved and seconded. On the question, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed, carried. The next up is the Public Works Committee. And we have some uh, three motions to be dealt with here. Coming out of the recommendations from this report. Uh, CAO, if you would. The of the Public Works Committee was called to order 1205 p.m. by Councilor. Catherine uh, Sutherland, present work. Mayor Eric Smith, and Anthony CAO, Andrew Garnett, Director of Public Works, and Delegation Mary Ennis. Attention. All business, Mark Gaddis, lot of requests, verbal discussion of the agreement was held with, with Mark Gaddis, and the written agreement will be created this week once finished, both parties will sign. And as you know, that agreement uh, has been uh, prepared. And also reviewed by our legal counsel, and all is in order as per directive of uh, council. Ten building supplies expansion, nothing to present today, however, it is expected by weeks in to have a building permit application submitted complete with parking lot layout, which has taken place since the time. And as anybody who's driving down Collins Street can see, there's activity alongside of Kent, which is another good addition to our community. No business, water and sewer bylaw update, wording under section 13, the water and sewer bylaw was reviewed and pertains to intent, was recommended by the committee to change the wording to help with its entirety. See attached for the new suggested wording of this section. A change to the bylaw will be needed for this. Purchase of salt and uh, hauling tender to result in the truck hauling for salt and cost of salt was reviewed by the committee. It was, it, it was explained by Andrew Garnett that the submission from Nutrient PCS sales is acceptable because it is, it is an extension of a tender to the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure. Final cash recommendation from Andrew Garnett for both of these tenders. Correspondence from the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure, designated highway program. A letter was received from DPI attached explaining they have received our submission for the designated highway program. And it will be considered. The town's portion for 2021 will be $185,000. Next meeting, TBA, meeting adjourned at 12.50 p.m. Submitted by Mr. Andrew Garnett, Director of Public Works and Development. Okay, first step coming into this report would be the motion to approve the salt all in tender results. As the AO can agree to the record for us, the uh, gifts. Uh, two, two bids, uh, one bid from uh, Brendan Farms for uh, $20.95 for Mexican Tug, Hoverson Trucking Limit for $23.77, uh, Metric Tug. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, know, I don't know if it's HST, but I want to say HST, uh, and there's no HST listed up either. So the lowest tender is Brendan's Farm in the amount of $20.95 for Metric Tug. We have a motion for the exception. Moved and seconded. On the question, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. Carried. Now, just again for clarification on the salt per se, uh, just maybe one more time to read the prices of the record and, and comment again on why there's just one bid. 
for the, for the salt. Well, with the last year we, we called that we asked the question around the table: Can we, can we as a community, avail of the tender price that is uh, received through the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure for other municipalities? And for education uh, facilities, for church facilities, for hospital facilities, and I may be missing one that's health, education, religion. Okay, and the municipalities. We have uh, achieved the best price that you know we could get as opposed to what we received last year. We have a motion to accept that price. So moved and seconded. On the question, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed, carry. Can I ask what last price was last year? I think you said it was actually the same. Oh, okay. I don't step on that. It's I on, it says right down at the bottom of that. Yeah. Okay, so that's yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, item number three will now go to the uh, Director of Administrative Service for the uh, consideration of first and second reading. Uh, the amendment, amendment uh, bylaw 160-160.1 water and sewer bylaw. So if we could have the first reading. Your Worship, um, I need to apologize. I uh, just realized when we were sitting here earlier that um, I hadn't prepared the, uh, the, the bylaw with yeah. that amendment in it. Um, and I haven't posted it on the website either. And we'll take a both motion. Those we'll take the motion to table then. Sorry. And seconded. Thank you. On the question, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed? Um, okay, that concludes the uh, public works. Next up is uh, finance. And if we could have the reading of the finance committee report. Finance committee meeting November 2nd, 2020, at 12 noon in attendance. Uh, Councilor Sutherland, Chair, Mayor Slick, Councilor Leonard, and Anthony, CEO, uh, Economic Development Officer, and Lee Ball Thor, Director of Administrative Services, Clerk Treasurer. The meeting was called to order and the following items were discussed. Outstanding business, uh, foreign update, update, loader, made back the windows. Of course, the windows now are going to be over the equation. Uh, Director of Administrative Services of all four advised at the meeting that the borrowing for the loader, eight back, and windows has been approved by the Municipal Capital Borrowing Board. RFP for banking update, the banking proposal from local banks that we received and we reviewed review this month. New business purchase a loader proposal for three loaders for review. See attached, it was agreed to recommend the council to purchase a loader from Maritime Case. An amount of 171000 plus HST at the recommendations of the Director of Public Works. Purchase of HVAC, the quote for HVAC system uh, for the police station review. See attached, it was agreed that the recommended council to approve the quote for the ventilation system from valid refrigeration and temperance heating in an amount of 20400 plus HST. 2021 budget. Uh, DAS Baltor advised the meeting the budget from each department has been reviewed and combined to one document for the town, town of Woodstock. It was agreed that CEO Anthony and DAS Baltor will review the budget this week and review council and department heads this Thursday at 7 p.m. at the town council office. Date of next meeting, December 8, 2020. Meeting was adjourned. Okay, so again, we have uh, the awarding of two tenders to approve the uh, purchase of the loader as recommended, and we need to have the uh, bids and then the recommendation on which company to proceed with. And then, do we uh, have a pre written draft? We have one ready to go for the resolution for each of those purchases. Okay, CAO yep. on the loader. And the loader, a request for Paul to close on September the 10th. 2020 at 3 p.m. The following submissions were received. Maritime case 2015 K621F, wheel loader from the public, Craig Cloud, 171 plus HST, Atlantic Equipment 2019 835 H, wheel loader from the public, Craig Cloud, 260 plus HST, a branded 218 John Deere 524 K2 wheel loader from the public, and sweep, 169 plus HST. 
We are recommending to go with the option from a maritime case as it is the lowest price that meets our specification, which is 471000 plus HSC. Okay, we take the uh, motion from the Director of Administrative Services. To uh, approve the purchase of the 2015 case 621F fuel loader complete with pocket uh, Craig Plow for Maritime Case Lima of 171000 plus HST. So Moved by Finance Chair, seconded by Councilor Bradbury. On the question, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, carry. <coughs> Next up is the approved the HVAC at the police station. Again, if you can read the reports for us. So the one we received, uh, Mr. Mayor, is to approve the quote for ventilation system or gallery refrigeration. Ever seating in the number 20,400 plus HST. That was the only submission. The only one that we have. Okay, so we'll take a motion to approve. Okay, moved. And I got seconded there by Councillor Blackburn. Beach of that. You reach for glasses. You got in ahead of you. On the question, all in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, all opposed, carried. Next up, recreation and community services. Many chosen November 3rd, 2020. We were to move on a motion to accept the report. Thank you. Yeah, we need a motion to accept the finance committee report so, as presented. So moved. And seconded by Gregory on the question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, thank you for that. And now we move on to rec and poem. Tuesday, November 3, 2020, in attendance, Councilor Bradbury, Chair, Mayor Slick, Councilor Blackburn. CEO Ken Anthony, Kelly Foster, Health Director of Recreation Community Services, and your motor center facility manager, Toby Perry, for the events coordinator. But she was there to discuss the trade challenge. Minutes for October 2020 were approved by Mayor Sink, Mayor Eric Sink, and second by Councilor Blackburn. Discussion was held on all this living estate. I spoke to the living estate piece that we did. Uh, have a meeting this past uh, Wednesday at the town office with representation from the Reduction uh, River Association. And uh, we we're just wanting to make sure that we're going to do anything with the Fleming Estate and the uh, Tappan Abney uh, project. And we would make sure that we do it in uh, communication with the Reduction Bay River Association for their expertise and guidance. And uh, really, there's going to be another meeting this coming uh, for next Wednesday at the town office to discuss next steps from here. The ski trail proposal was deferred and Kelly Tennis Court, the director of recreation, is in the process of requiring folks to update the current outdoor tennis facility and our possible relocation, currently waiting for the asphalt quote fencing and net apparatus quote <coughs> have been received. Echo Chill delivery, currently, as you know, is stored underneath the town office. We are trying to find a place to store the water tower, which is going to be delivered in the next couple of weeks. The pool of HVAC tender package in progress, field house lighting, waiting of fixture delivery, order of all county uh, to be up, operational by the end of November in its current location, dashboard to be, bought, to be provided by controls and equipment, Inglow to provide $12,000 towards other projects for engineering for design components. Correspondence from Woodstock Golf and Curling Club, the meeting was held with the Woodstock Golf and Curling Club stakeholders and October 20th, 2020, discussion was held regarding the possibilities of the town of Woodstock in time commitment to the Woodstock Golf and Curling Club irrigation project. The Woodstock Golf and Curling Club provide water consumption estimates and regarding it to ensure capacity. CEO to determine town's ability to accept donations from the community towards the Woodstock Golf and Curling Club project. Action CEO to meet with the town to determine Town's ability to accept donations from the community towards the Woodstock Golf and Curling Club project. And your parents to ensure town of Woodstock has the water capacity. Recreation service agreement with local service district. Discussion took place with the expiration of the recreation service agreement with the local service district and the mandate of the new minister of local government. Action CEO, CEO to contact Ms. Hullock to determine the exact start and termination dates of the current agreement. And I can let you know that both the mayor and I met with Ms. Les Heller on Thursday of last week, and she's still working on that information for us. And the meeting with her director in a couple of weeks in Fredericton is hoping to provide a further update at that time. 
Still business, COVID-19 AMC operation update last. Director of Recreation reported on additional expenses and projected revenue last due to COVID-19 to the end of 2020, which would be an estimated of 397800 Budget discussion took place regarding the Recreation Community Service 2021 budget and how it is reported. Uh, craft for Christmas trade show discussion took place regarding the craft for Christmas trade show. All were in favor of the trade show continuing on Saturday, November the 7th with proper safety protocols in place. Outdoor rink, recreation community services are repairing the outdoor rink site. Participants will be expected to social distance on the ice surface and wear face masks inside the rink shack. LED sign, CEO report, the LED sign currently located on Angleton Church property downtown is being relocated to the corner of Connell and Connell Park Road. CEO, Director of Recreation Community Service to follow up with West Corey regarding detail. In the Tunnel of Doom, Councilor uh, Bradbury reported that 1,800 people participated in the Woodstock Rotary Tunnel of Doom, Hunter Drive, where we met on Halloween. Mayor Stephanie and committee members expressed what a great event it was and how appreciative they were that the Woodstock Rotary Club provided this event to the Woodstock community and surrounding area. And I think, Mr. Mayor, that is it. Okay. Uh, there hasn't been anything requiring a specific motion other than to accept the report as presented. Take a motion. All. And seconded. On the question, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, carried. Just wanted to ask um, Ken, do you know if names and phone numbers for contract tracing purposes were taken on Saturday? Well, um, I'm pretty sure everybody went to the building and said when we had our committee meeting here three or four weeks ago. Yeah. That was one of the things we recommended to make sure that they were taken. Yeah. It was done. It was done. Yeah, it was done. That was the thing. Okay, now our Director of Administrative Services tells me that I also neglected to get a motion for the acceptance of the Public Works Report as presented. Um, and seconded a lot of the question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, all opposed, carry. Thank you. That brings us to the end of the agenda. Our next meeting will be held at the Air Motor Center in the gallery room. And we're attempting to, we're going to stay there until I guess the COVID pandemic is over. We've been having some difficulties with. Uh, making sure that we've got adequate space for someone that might like to come to a public hearing. So until we get our uh, improved video capability in the new year when we discuss it in the budget, we're going to continue to meet in the gallery room at the Air Motor Center. And hopefully that will deal with all of those uh, concerns. We'll have enough space to social distance, and we should be able to accommodate anybody that wants to uh, be in attendance to the public components of the meeting. So with that, uh, we stand adjourned. Members of council have one item on a uh, legal matter that we have to take a quick look at, and then we will be off.